Welcome back to the Social Impact Level Up podcast. This is where we blur the lines between business, nonprofit, and impact. I'm your host, Wendy V, and I'm a social impact strategist here to help you build a successful and sustainable legacy of social change. In this week's episode, we're going to hear from a social entrepreneur who has been on a journey to change the world just like you. If you are interested in social entrepreneurship, this is the place for you. Let's jump right into this week's episode. Hey everyone, it's me, Wendy V, and I'm here with another episode of the Social Impact Level Up podcast. Today we have my friend, Sandra Noemi Torres, who's here to talk to us about a whole bunch of things, including being a Latina entrepreneur, having a media or social media agency, and working to support entrepreneurs who might be a little bit stressed out or overwhelmed to make sure that they can get business in the door and do it as efficiently as possible. So I'm excited to have her here. So welcome. How are you, Sandra? Give um, yeah. our audience just a brief intro to who you are and what you do. Yeah, thank you so much, Wendy, for having me on the show. Um, like Wendy said, my name is Sandra Nomi Torres. I'm a, I've been in marketing and advertising for the greater portion of my career for the 20 plus years. Um, and I we help is primarily the market that we serve is frustrated entrepreneurs and business owners that are already currently running ads that are not effective. We come in and revamp what they're doing and make it work for them, um, as well as a full service media agency. So we do uh, social media management. Ma- main three pillars are website design, social media content, and then the ad services is really our, our um, what we do primarily. Um, so that's my LLC. I also own um, or part ownership of an organization that supports Latin entrepreneurs. And that's kind of how we'll weave that all in, I suppose. Uh, but um yeah, I'd love to share more about that as we go along with the show. But generally, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm an empty nester. I'm a mom. My son's out of the house. Uh, and I'm focused on helping entrepreneurs really get the tools and the insight they need to grow, ultimately. That's awesome. And I know that, yeah, it's a, talking about Latina business is definitely something we want to talk about today. But let's start first with the idea of needing to show up online and have a presence. You talked about websites, like that's a very fundamental thing for social entrepreneurs to prove that they're a legitimate impact driven organization, that they have a mission or that they have um, values that might align with their customers or clients. Like all of these things are super important. So having a web presence is like the first, first step. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, how you guide people through that initial thought process or the initial, like when they come to you to say, hey, I need help online, but I don't even know what I need. Like, what does that look like for people? Yeah, so that is, and it looks differently for different uh, individuals. But first we come in and we create a strategy, right? We need to understand what is the plan, right? What most people have the, um, like by default, it's like, I just have to get something up there, which that works for certain instances and for temporary holds, but it's now becomes, well, what is the website going to do? What is the purpose? And this is your home base, right? Because we have to be out there on all these platforms promoting and they're all, all roads lead back to home, right? To the base. What is it that you want them to do? So we take them through a process of really understanding their strategy. We do some research, um, all three types of research. So you got to do your market research. You got to make sure that you understand the market very well. Uh, you want to do competitor research, see who else is out there. What are they doing? What content are they doing? What website? What, what does their website look like? What are, what are their clear call to action? Um, and then your target audience research, really understanding who your market is and what are the true needs of that audience. So that's the core of, okay, well, what are we working with? Um, and then we go into, okay, well, what is the products and services that you're carrying? And what is the problem with, within that? What is the problem that you're delivering to, to the audience? So taking a look at that, generally, we start to craft, okay, what this website needs to have in order to perform. Um, and not just fluff words, but really intentional words that make sense, their keywords part of the keyword strategy and, um, you know, it, it guides the, the visitor to that site to make a clear decision and know exactly what it is that you're doing. So, so first we start with a strategy. You can't do anything without a strategy plan. You need to have a plan. Otherwise you're running a million miles a minute going in every direction and you're not focused. And that tends to derail people when you're not focused. 
That's so funny. As a social impact strategist, I can say you definitely need a strategy. And for impact-driven organizations or social entrepreneurs, the strategy has to include sometimes both appealing to people who you want to support you for money, donations, all of these things, and then the people that you actually serve. So when you're talking about knowing who needs to come to your website, one of the things I always mention is it sometimes has multiple purposes, people coming to the same website. And it could be, you know, you need to be really clear about what services you provide because you need to attract the right clients to your services. But then it also could be you need the people to donate so that the service happens. <laughs> and it's really yeah. gets, you know, complex for like a nonprofit website, for example. And so I love what you just mentioned. And if people missed it or were not taking notes, like go back to what Sandra was saying about the process, because that's an amazing process to walk through. It's very logical. It builds on itself and it also gets you to the end goal of having a purpose driven website, which is like ideal for social entrepreneurs. So. Um, so that was a really awesome answer. And when you're working with your clients or working on these strategies, one of the strategies I know you use is ads. And this is something that in my experience, people have recommended a couple of things. One, not doing ads until you're really ready. And two, not doing ads unless you have somebody like a professional like you helping you. <laughs> so, but do you want to talk a little bit more about for people who've never used ads and even for organizations who might be like purpose driven and have no idea why they would want to have an ad? What is that? What are ads about and how can people start working with them? Yeah, for sure. And I just want to go briefly back to what you just uh, ended with on the, on the website. That is the, a problem for many, right? Well, I don't know. We have different kinds of audiences reaching our, our site. I don't know what to say particularly which goes to, well, that audience should have their own particular landing page, right? Donors of a website or of your, of a company or supporters, they want to see that you are actively solving the solution that they're looking to support. So, so long as your copy is, you know, it, if your website is primarily for the people that there's interaction with the individuals that you're serving going on there, that's one reason. If the website's primarily for the donors and the sponsors, then you're just sharing that message to them, right? What is the work that you're doing involved? It's, it always seems, I always say just, it's never just the just, right? It's, not, it's, it's hard stuff to kind of write and put together, you know, you know, you're in the, in the industry, but um, really crafting your message so that it, it, it really inspires those donors to be inspired to donate. Um, so <clears throat> for sure, that portion on the ad side, which um, I see this all the time, people just are like, I, I'm doing ads. I put something up on Facebook and it doesn't work. And, you know, Facebook doesn't work for me. And I said, you know, one thing, Facebook, um, and I'm a fan of ads on multiple platforms, but Facebook knows everything about us. They know who likes their coffee hot. They know who likes their coffee cold. They know who, they know every, they know if you like to wear blue socks. I mean, we, we think like they can't possibly know this stuff. There's so many algorithmic things that like Facebook has dominated their everything about us. That's why we tend to get ads that it, we can look at something and suddenly something else that's like similar, like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. We see um, they know everything about it. So when we think about advertising on platforms, number one, your audience is there, right? You want to you want to choose the specific platform, but you think about where audiences are are all at. Um, if you're B to C, you know, you're looking at. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Google, um, and then B2B for sure, definitely adding on LinkedIn and Pinterest also to some of those things. Uh, but when we think about um, ads, a lot of the things that people do wrong are just slap something up there, right? They create something quick and it really is. And the way that I've, I've seen a lot of ads done is they're, um, they're messaging. There is no messaging there, you know, there, there's just a, here, I have this. Right. And that's that's a problem. Nobody wants to be sold. Right. None of us want to be sold. We want to buy and we want to be inspired to buy by something that is is meaningful. So when we can pinpoint, again, the problem that we're solving, like be, you know, and, and be very clear on pinpointing that problem, we can hit that message right where it matters. Right. The second thing is people need to see ads more than one time to make a decision. So, you know, we get a lot of, um, you know, I've been running these ads and it doesn't work. And we ran it for, you know, seven days or 10 days or two weeks. Um, and there's one thing I always tell, number one, if it, there's something in Facebook that says, 
give it about 10 days to make a decision whether or not to do anything with that. I say sooner. Within three to five days, you'll know if this ad is getting no activity, that something in there needs to change, the headline, the image, something, right? Because they're reaching, they're, they're sending out to a lot of people. So um, if no one is responding, then something is wrong with the ad itself. So it usually starts with the core messaging. It can start with the image that's just not attractive enough. It's not capturing anybody's attention. But typically the main thing that's wrong is that it's not speaking to the problem. It's not, you know, and, and that's primarily the key. You know, you want to talk to what it is that you're bringing to the table. Again, nobody wants to buy. We want to, but we love shopping and we love spending money, right? But And we get mad when we don't know about the newest thing, right? It's funny. It's like the, the FOMO really works, but like you, when you see it the first time, you're like, I don't know if I really want that. Do I need it? Do I want to pay that much for it? I don't know. Eh, yeah. Swipe off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that was a decision because the messaging there even even met, you didn't convince you that you did need it or that it could help you in some way or that it could change your life for the better, even just a minute, just a, a little snippet better, you know? Um Yeah, yeah no, that's a cool concept. And I and I want to go back to what you were saying about the um inspiring and copy and all of this. I think it goes beautifully to ads as well. People like to see the transformation. I mean, I think they like to see story. They like to see um, vignette or like people's experience, testimonials. Like we talk about that a lot in marketing, but it is interesting how that like connection, especially with impact driven businesses, the connection with the transformation that that business helps to inspire, that goes a long way for whether it's copy or website designer, like anything that you can integrate. And so yeah. I'm curious of, you know, in that space of how to integrate your impact into the the online things that you're doing, whether it's ads or websites or whatever, what is your opinion on like the best practice or how to do that? For ads? No, for, for any, any online communication that you want to pick, you answer it whatever way you'd like. <laughs> Okay. Repeat you want to focus? Get... Yeah, just with um for for businesses and people that are showing this idea of like I'm making an impact and kind of like connecting it together, like you said earlier, inspiring others. Like, what's a best practice for people who want to do that through their vehicles, whether it's ads or website or social media posts or whatever? How what what's a best practice they can follow to start showing their impact and the work that they're doing online? Okay, got it. Uh, so if it's a nonprofit, for sure, we want to see the work, right? We want to see the good and we want to feel good, right? And so, so I think the goal of most nonprofits is to collect money, right? You can't operate, unfortunately, without the money. And that's the core. They need that. We all need that. You know, I've, I've been part of a nonprofit in the past. Um, so that is the core reason. In order for people to be inspired to donate to the cause, they want to feel connected to the cause. They want to, you know, sometimes you find yourself even... Uh, maybe scrolling through social media and you'll see something and it makes you cry just because it's so beautiful, right? It was just like so meaningful. And it just, you'll watch it again and again, just because that moment where that person did something and that other person just cried and it just, it connects with us, right? We can connect with those parts and that's what nonprofits need to do. They need to connect with that part that moves us so much that connects with us. We all I just came off of, we just launched a book um yesterday i don't know when this is coming up but it's it's all about stories you know the stories of women that come together and and we were talking especially in communities of color we have a lot of similar stories right we, there's a weave that 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 goes through it but what connects us is that that you know what inspires us is that connection you know so when even when we are shopping when it's it's just a regular product or service we still need to feel like we it's what's in it for me what, what am I going to get from this, right? Because I think we're all on a journey of, I want to grow, I want to be better, I want to do better, I want to know more, I want to, I want to, you know, certain audiences, I want to be a better human being. So when ads come out, or, and when organizations come out with some type of messaging that says, be better, you know, and in, in, in to that tune of, you know, be better by these things through this avenue that we, through our work, right? Be a better human by donating to this cause that supports these communities or be a better human by, by that route, right? Generally speaking, it's not the exact messaging, but in, to an essence, that's the, that's the focus, right? Because they're talking now to us, to the part of us that wants to be better. 
Do you want to be better? You know, this is an outlet. Not only that, you're giving back to community, right? So within all the different platforms of social media, the messaging has to show someone you we're here, we're in it together, right? We've all been through some journeys. Um, we've all had highs and lows. We've all hit rock bottom, some multiple rock bottom, right? So when we can create messaging that really connects to the heart and not the pocket, that's when change is going to shift because that's all we really care about, right? We want to, we're more heartfelt these days. So, yeah. I love that answer. You, you answered it perfectly. There were so many rich parts of that. And I think the, the part about connecting to the meaning or the purpose or the heart or the higher aspirations of the person, sometimes it gets lost in the sauce with marketing jung- jargon. And mm-hmm. it's not as beautifully stated as you as you mentioned it, where it really is about connecting like human shared experience and how people view or connect with their own journey. <laughs> and then moving yeah. that into how you can help them or how we can connect to help others. Like there's there's a, such a, a really nice linear thread there. Um, and I wanted to ask you again about this concept of um, with ads and, and helping people, you know, invest in you or, or take that step and the copy and the inspiration and the headline, you mentioned all of those things, but I think for people who don't know, what, maybe they, they just scroll past an ad and are not realizing even it's an ad because <laughs> I know people like this are like, oh, that's an ad. It looks like a post. In any of these social media platforms, sometimes it doesn't, something doesn't stand out and then you don't buy it, right? Like you don't buy into the inspiration or you don't buy into the story of the transformation. So what can people do with their their ads particularly to stop that scroll or to really help people focus in on what they're saying for them? Yeah, well, firstly, there's several ways, right? To, you, there's a, and there's ads is about testing, right? You, you don't know if you are unclear on your audience, you want to test all of those things. Ads that look like just a general post feed, right? If you want to test that and if it's aligned with your industry and your strategy. Um, but those images, they need to stop you, right? People are scrolling. So what's going to make someone stop? You know, we, what would make you stop, right? You know, I, so we often think about that. I always tell my clients, you know, like, go through your feed and what stops you, right? Because that's completely polar opposite to what you think shouldn't be on an ad campaign, right? So, you know, and then they look at it differently because we need to capture somebody's attention. It's either that shock that you need to see this, this is important. And when you even approaching it with that energy that that when you're creating that copy, when you're creating that, like this is a gift. Right. Because, and I always think of it, I only bring on companies that, are, that I work with that are doing some type of positive thing, right. Through their avenue. Um, but that's your gift. Your, your space is your gift, you know, and what happens a lot, especially when it's a not, when it's nonprofits or you're asking for funding, it could be like, I don't want to ask, you know, so I'm just going to subtly put this message out there, but I'm not going to boldly put it out there. Right. And we need to boldly put it out there because we want to give money to organizations that are doing good. We want to, because that makes us feel good, right? So if it makes us feel good, think about that. That's what you should be playing on. We are desire and need to want to feel good by doing these things that, that make us feel good. Um, so the, it's got to catch you. It's gotta, it's got, you got to test different images, different videos, different styles um, until you find one that really resonates with your target audience, right? What, what's the messaging or what's the visual representation that's going to make them like, oh, oh, they're talking about me. They're talking to me. I need to pay attention to this. So yeah, it's got to be the visual. And that's a great advice to be bold about your impact and not to hide it. And I think you're right that sometimes even more so now you're seeing consumers choose a brand to work with or to buy into that represents something bigger than just a profit. And we're, I talk about like social business a lot because I think that this is a really great concept. If when you have a crowded marketplace of, you know, 50 choices as we do online that we can Google pretty much anything to have 50 alternatives of, of purchasing, why not invest in the one that does give back or that has some sort of ethical standards or that has, you know, environmental um, 
like it's some sort of impact driven model that they follow. Like there's a lot of ways to be discerning, I think now about what we consume. And sometimes, you know, the best way for us to know about those things are through advertising or through the marketing of those organizations. So the things we're talking about right now are really great examples of ways that businesses, even small businesses, can take that impact work and use it as a vehicle to drive their profit. Because it's a really kind of circular sort of thing with impact. It's like, hey, like you said, we're inspiring people to come and work with this brand over that brand because they do make an impact. And then the more profit that we make, the more impact we can make. It. <laughs> so it's, yeah. you know, so it's a really cool thing. But I think that as consumers, we need to probably be a little better about expecting that there are options of people who are telling us about their impact so that we can support them. Um, and I think that's where there's a little bit of a gap in the in how we're doing all of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And there's and there's also the, the I mean, the social media piece. So we, we've been talking about ads, but most of those companies, they want to know, they, they'll, they'll check out all your social channels. So if you're not active on there sharing the same similar message, then it could be, um, are they really doing the work, right? So it's all, all those pieces. That's why I always tell people before you run ads, make sure that you are, you have a routine with your social media um, and you're on the right platform, especially for nonprofits. There's a lot of space on LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn is a big, a big platform for nonprofits. Why? Because we like to support causes that are doing good, you know, and these are, this is a, it's a great market of people that have been, you know, in the industry and, and they want to support, um, they want to, they want to do good. You know, they have the money to support those organizations. Have you seen LinkedIn for nonprofits as a whole new little section that they built out for just nonprofit organizations? No, I haven't. I haven't. Yeah, it it's, it's kind of wild. It's, um, uh, like, I, I, I don't want to say just a curation of content because I think there are other benefits, but they're trying to encourage nonprofits to make pages on LinkedIn. That's one of the of the goals is to have like more support yeah. around non the nonprofit sector. And it's really been interesting to see them uh, roll that out because I've been I've been following in kind of like, I wonder how this space is going to be um, ultimately cultivated. I'm not sure. But but I love what you mentioned about LinkedIn getting left out because LinkedIn is the um, professional older step brother of all these other platforms. And yeah. now you see more people putting personal photos, their social Saturday, like there's other things going on on the platform that happen that are more like Facebook used to be 10 years ago, for example. So it is kind of interesting because you have, I think, on LinkedIn, these people who want to keep it super professional and other people who are like, no, I want to be a whole person on this platform. <laughs> yeah. It depends, it, depends, it depends on, you know, the person, the individual for sure. Uh, but when you think about it, like Facebook, like the audiences on Facebook are uh, pretty much everyone. I mean, I, I, or, but a lot of people have migrated away. <clears throat> They're not like, I'm not, and I know many people that are not as active on Facebook, um, unless I have to on certain things, uh, you know, and th certain companies are for sure. Um, but and you think about running a nonprofit ad on an Instagram and running a nonprofit ad or presence on LinkedIn, the one that's going to garner, I, I mean, unless it's a real and it is really heart hitting, like heart hitting, it's hitting me. It's not going to get a lot of traction because the audience also there, even though every, most CEOs and executives and pro high professionals, that everybody has an Instagram account for the most part. It's not a platform where the majority is very intentional with that, right? You, ha you have people that are scrolling and it's not really the audience that has, they can give you a hundred dollars very easily, quickly without, I mean, yes, that exists, but in the nonprofit space, that might be you should be on Instagram, but it might, I think LinkedIn uh, as a platform though, on the other side of that is such a, um, you know, it is, it is ideal for nonprofits because of the change that we've gone through because of COVID. I mean, it has been evolving over the years, but it is much more of a community that's invested in human being. And that's it plain and simple. And when we can, again, showcase that, showcase good work, showcase positive things happening, showcase we are being the change by this avenue and this this portion is how we're helping people people flock to support that period when i moved uh my focus a little bit away from instagram and more onto linkedin i had this like tear of a moment because i think as a consumer of content but to your point before i enjoy instagram 
But as a business owner and needing to strategize my marketing for my business, I recognize that the people that I need to work with are over on LinkedIn. And it was such a like almost heart wrenching moment when I was like, no, but I really love Instagram. And, you know, and it's, it's, I, I hear from people all the time, you can make any platform work. You just need to focus and da, 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 and, you know, really yeah. need to have a purpose for it and a plan and all of that stuff. But I think what you're saying also is that in your strategy development, you really have to think about what people are using that platform for. And if they only have a little attention spent on that platform, you want to make sure that it's as closely aligned to your intention as possible. And so I'm, I'm excited about that idea of, of, you know, how can I be more intentional on, on LinkedIn? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And then thinking about the, um, where you're talking about ads and, and all of these other things, you know, I, I think that there's so many tools online. There's so many ways that people can share their impact message. There's so many ways that people can talk about, you know, these stories of transformation and all of these different things. In your experience with, um, with all of the different social media platforms, how do you guide your clients to where they're going to focus? Like, I think that this is a question people struggle with the most. It's um, if I'm supposed to get expert at one, which, <laughs> how do I choose? <laughs> yeah, that is a, <clears throat> the question of the decade, right? Or last two decades. Um, I believe you have to be omnipresent in today's day, right? You don't know where your clients are necessarily. And you, you have to have a presence everywhere. Um, once you identify, you know what? most activity in the, in the ideal clients are really on LinkedIn or they're on Instagram, then you go hard on those platforms and you show up a lot more than the other platforms. But you really do want to position yourself where you exist, obviously everywhere, and it's not dormant. So you are sharing every now and then you're sharing, you're sharing posts because someone will, you know, it, it's funny because I'll see on most websites, you have your social icons, right? If you go to those social icons and the page has no posts on it, what's the point of having it there, right? So you don't want to deter anyone from feeling like they just started, you know, they, they haven't done anything yet or they're too new for me, right? You want to be out there with your message and plaster that message everywhere and then go hard on the platforms that you feel like these are my people. This is where I'm going to play. But there's a lot of, like you said, there's a lot of tools that can automate some of those things, right? You, there's a lot of schedulers that, that you can set up so that you can create a core messaging and then just make sure that it's going out periodically to all of your platforms and then really focus on, um, you know, the one that you really feel uh, that you want to master, right? Because if, if the money is coming from a, spe you know, a specific platform, majority, or the people, the contacts, the relationships that are going to help you make these happen, you want to definitely master that platform, right? If you're, if you feel Instagram, you got to be all in on Instagram reels, right? Vertical videos is where it's at. And then you take that video and I tell everybody, if you're going to make a vertical video, it's got to go everywhere, right? Vertical videos. And it's, a, it's on purpose that it's a vertical video versus um, a horizontal, right? Even though you can take these and take them into a, a reel, but you, but you take that video you already made and you're just duplicating, deploying it on Instagram, deploying it on Facebook, deploying it on YouTube shorts, deploying it on LinkedIn as content, you know, TikTok, if you're on TikTok for sure, right? So you can make one piece of content and deploy it everywhere. Um, and then your messaging and the relationship building, that happens more on a platform like LinkedIn. Um, well, for my industry and, in, in you know, but on certain other platforms, client platforms, we're messaging and in, in group boards. You know, where we have tons of those DMs going back and forth on, on Instagram and on, on Facebook. So it really depends where the conversation is about what it is that you're doing, right? What's the topic and what, where does, where's that conversation being had right now? Or where can I introduce it to these people who haven't, you know, thought about it? And that freshness is also, is also good. Yeah, that's that's such good advice about the where is the conversation taking place because you hear everybody talking about community. Everything is community on build community, online community, all of these things, community, community. And I I was so confused when I first started doing this more like focusing on marketing and and on social media because I was like, where are these people? You know, I'm used to working in the community, like out in the world, <laughs> you know. When yeah. I hear the word community as a social entrepreneur, I'm used to community centers full of people doing 
you know, things like impact-based work, you know. And so when I would hear the word community online and it had a totally different meaning and totally different vibe, I had no idea what they were talking about. But I think it, it's really simple in what you were saying. It's like, where is the action happening? Where is the conversation happening? And where can you plug in? And then that's where you kind of put your focus. So I want to ask you like about um, this aspect of like online community and community building, what comes up for you or what resonates for you in, um, in that space of people's work to build a community online? So there's a lot on that. So I like you, I like face to face. I like, you know, so a, a lot of it is really planning out how do I get these people from seeing just a profile to really having an interaction with them, right? So, I mean, you want to find a way to get them off the platform in some way, right? Um, so building community um, can happen in any platform if you're showing up all the time. You may notice if you're, if you're on a Discord and you see certain names, you, like, you start getting to know these people. If you're on LinkedIn and people are sharing certain things, you start to get to know these people. Even if they're halfway across the world, right? There's, we have a, I have a big community of people that I feel like I know but I don't really know them. <laughs> like know everything about them, but they're my people, right? Because, because we're in the same, we're in the same space of wanting to see some change happen. So they're my people. I, I, and anybody is my people that wants to move forward, you know, positive progress. So when you find your people, I think it's, um, and the way to find your people is to really put that message out there. What are your goals? What do you want to teach? Be, be bold in that avenue of sharing with the world. What is it that, what's important to you? What matters to you? We care about that stuff, right? Sometimes we feel like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to share that or that's not important. Or, but the moment that we become vulnerable and share our stories and share what we've been through and share why we think the way we do and why this is important to us and why this means something to us, Someone else is going to be inspired by that because they're con they can connect with the idea of something meaning something to us. So it resonates with them. You start building people that will start messaging or start following you um, and then start, you know, creating and crafting a community. There's lots of platforms for communities. We have a full Slack channel. Um, we have groups, WhatsApp groups. We have, um, you know, all, all, all different types, but that's the goal is you want to take these people and, Invite them to do things, invite them to be part of events, invite them to be part of the conversation to expand that conversation. So especially if you're a lone ranger and you're like, you know, this conversation, let's start doing, let's start bringing in people like you're doing. You are, this is the example of that. You're bringing in people to have the conversation of how do we do this better, you know? Um, and the more that you do that, the more it's going to just, you know, be a self-propelling, um, you know, machine that it'll happen. Oh, that's such a good answer. And I, I love this self-propelling machine because I, I think that, you know, we all are, are like, I don't know if this is working or not. You know? <laughs> well, this is a, the, you're always second guessing yourself when you're doing stuff online, I think, until you are, you know, unless you're working with an expert or a coach or you have somebody like you doing it for them. And it's, um, I think it could be overwhelming for a lot of the people that I work with um, to even start because some of them come to me and they say, I don't even know, I don't even have a social media presence right now, but I want to do this really amazing work in the community. How can I get people to partner with me or trust me if they don't even see me online? You know, those are the mm -hmm. kinds of questions that people come with. And it's hard because you have to start, everybody starts somewhere. Everybody yeah. starts at zero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you can't escape the social media machine, right? So I've spoken to, especially the Gen X, you know, generation is like, oh God, you know, do I have to, do I have to do videos? Do I have to show up? I'm just so old school. I don't really, I don't know what to say. It's just like, just, you know, I'm comfortable here. And, but you know what, in today's world, if you're not on social media, you don't need exist, you know, I mean, you do exist obviously, but if you are in business, you need to be on social media. And even if it's just, and I totally get it. Cause I, I've had people that it's like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. And I have, you know, you know, I'm not on some of these platforms or I'll hear them in coaching. I'm like, well, we have to overcome that part of ourselves, right? If you are serious about making change and impact, you have to get serious about a strategy plan that's going to impact others to, to see that message. Otherwise, um, and not otherwise, it's worked in the past, right? We've done pre-social media, we've made impact. 
But um, but in today's world, this is where we're getting our, our information from. Um, so you can do work out in the community, door to door on grassroots, boots on the ground type of work that work. Uh, but if you want to have presence and reach people, you know, it's got to be you got to have something on social media that shows the world that you're alive. You have a mission, you have a vision and you're interested in something. And that makes other people interested in you. Yeah. And they can align with your values if their values align. And then, you, like you said, you know, they're so inspired to kind of follow you around. And I know we wanted to talk yeah. about Latinas in business. This is a really good segue into that conversation. This is one of the things that we're we're part of the same community online around Latino business owners and um, in the Clubhouse app. But I think that there's so many others who um, are, I am increasingly seeing the number of Latina businesses, I mean, Latina owned businesses being like one of the highest or rising t- t- types of business owners which I think yep. is amazing. And um, also at the same time, I feel like it, we don't have a good way to like all <laughs> support each other and collaborate and connect. And so I love that you're here and, and we're doing this podcast, but I wanted to get into that and see what work are you doing in that space and how, um, you know, how can maybe we be a little bit better about supporting each other as Latina business owners? Yeah. So one of the reasons, um, you know, when I first started my business, I used to go networking. And when I went networking and I'm seeing people, I was always always the only Latina in the room. And if there was another, it was a male. I bet, and I, and from there, I just had like, man, we need, we need to get these women out here. They need to be out professionally networking, feeling confident and so that they can be, they can, they can, they can grow. Um, so what I did, um, so I had this idea for several years, but what I did in 2018 is I started an organization called United Latina, which was geared to help train, professionally train, provide the leadership skills, the business skills to get women feeling like to get them out and, you know, and get trained and get them with these tools, some of these tools to get them feeling like they can go out there uh, and do the work that they need to do and then do it amongst the community of what other women that are having those same aspirational goals. I had a talk yesterday on actually our cafecito and we were talking, I'm like, you know, most of us, when we think about the sum of our five, right, really having people around you that are going to motivate you and have the same ideals in the Latino and communities of color overall, we don't necessarily have like, oh, I have like 10 entrepreneurs, my cousins, my they're all, entre- they're all business owners, they're all, we don't have that. We don't have that. I mean, like if you do, you're blessed. Right. You know, but if you don't, which is the majority of us, we have to figure that out alone. And we don't have a support of people that that are encouraging that. We have a, a community of that support and say, "We love you, but be safe and get it and do the safe thing." Right? We don't we don't have the go for it, go after your dreams. Go! I don't care how crazy there are, you should be pursuing them. Right? Um, within the in the Latinas community, um, we are consistently cultivating that that camaraderie of come here. We get it. You know, we understand that route. You know, so. United Latinas has been in existence in 2018, COVID happened. So we were unable to do in-person events, but we used to get together every single month and it'd be amazing. Just women feeling for that day that we got together, just like a poof. Of, I got my sisters around me. Or I got my community, people that understand me. And that's what we want, right? It's a human instinct that we want to feel understood. We want to feel like we're, we're felt, like we matter. And we do that when we are in communities of people that really understand what our history is um so uh yeah so we've been doing that after covid i brought in a partner we, we connected somebody that we've met through just doing uh through online through online right through through linkedin you know just seeing each other do stuff right we're both showing up on linkedin and we're just we connected somehow and now we're partners and um now that we're out of covid even more so stronger than ever with a, a clear mission we just released a book of a collaborative book of women that uh, 16 women and a, and a forward um, of top Latina leaders across the country that have a, their own story, their own path of how they became the CEOs or the executives of these Fortune 500 companies, um, because that is the community. We see ourselves in some of those stories and we can like, man, I understand that. I could feel that. And we, we desire to feel that. So we are constantly putting on events. We're constantly putting on support. We do lives, um, but we're constantly sharing that message, right? It's not always drilled in the first time. We have to keep sharing that message because people come to our meetings very shy. They don't want to turn on their camera. 
you know, we have people that do, but, and then it's funny because like every time we do our leadership meeting, um, we have a, sometimes we have a networking portion of it. As soon as we get to the networking portion, it goes through like the, the volume of the attendees, like, because people are afraid it starts dropping. So I remember what there were, and I see, and I see it dropping as soon as uh, we mentioned we we're going to go LinkedIn and I had to stop and I'm like, oh, hold up, hold up, stop right here. Just because, you know, and, and you're coming to a leadership meeting, number one, number two, um, you, people are intimidated to share who they really are. And I think that that's what we want to really address. You know, we try to encourage people like, you know, and that's I've stopped. And I'm like, every time before we even start, I'm like, listen, I don't care what you look like. We understand we got lives. We understand you got kids. We understand. I don't care if you're however you are at six o'clock at night, because I know that that time, you know, where we do our event. If it was at 12, yes, a little bit more presentable would be great. But, but I mean, we don't care. But that's the thing. I don't care how you show up. I think hunger shows up, period, you know, and if you're hungry to late gain knowledge and you're hungry to, to find a community of people that understand you, you have to open up a little bit about yourself, even if it's little by little, it's harder, you know, little by little, but just start opening up and being part of communities like United Latinas. There's, there's many of them, right? But our mission is to provide those leadership skills, to provide those business skills, but really provide the, the feeling that we can do this, you know, get women out of thinking like, I don't have a support system. My family is all telling me, go get a government job or to stay quiet. No, our mission is to get you loud. We want you speaking on stages and getting comfortable with that. We want you telling your story and being part of some of our books. We want you on platforms that are going to allow you to grow and be, the, be, you know, outgrow yourself, right? We have to do that every day, outgrow our old self. Whatever, whatever we are today, tomorrow we should be thinking about how can we better, how can we be better than our yesterday and finding a community like that, which I'm, I'm so blessed to have United Latinas and to be part of that organization. But it is an organization um, that is sole mission is to make sure that we have community, that we have each other to empower, that we have a sisterhood network and that we're all pushing each other to do, to outgrow ourselves, to be better, to go after that thing, to whatever that thing is for you, right? Not everybody's an entrepreneur. But everybody has a desire to be better, you know, and to move up in their career. So, yeah, communities are needed uh, for you to rise, you know, that, not needed necessarily. I did a lot of things on my own, but they're just more, they're going to get you by in life. And when you can find one that you vibe with, that you completely connect with, um, that's going to be a game changer for you and your business for sure. Man, that's like a, I'm like, I, I'm sold on that commercial. <laughs> I was like, yes, yeah, preach. That's great. And I, and I, I think the idea of um, how can you keep growing and up leveling every single day? How can you outgrow what you, whatever mold you were in yesterday and the next day and the next day? That's such a powerful thought. It, it just really stayed with me. Of like, gosh, I need to reflect on that after this episode because in some ways, I think you get stuck in the mindset that you're getting by or that you're you're showing up or that you're just doing, right? Like you're continuing to do. But I don't think we're always thinking about it as how do I um, incrementally grow each day as I'm doing, right? And get better and better and better. So I just wanted to appreciate you and thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Yeah. And you may not feel like drastic change, right? And it doesn't have to be drastic. We don't have to look for that drastic change, but we are powerful and we have to tap into that and that knowledge of knowing, man, we are powerful. Do I just get by or is this sufficient for me? Because it is, sometimes it is sufficient for people. You know, I have, I have people in my family, it's just like, so they're okay with just doing their, their job and, and not, and that's okay. Um, but if, if that works for you, great. But if you're not okay with that, then yeah, you have to really tap into like We are divine, powerful beings energetically. We're electricity. We have 7.3 trillion volts of electricity running through us. We have the power to shut down the town energetically, right? With, um, so I think that we need to always remember that. Like we are divine, we are powerful, and we really need to do the work to really understand that, right? This is not a neurology session. We could, and I'm not a doctor, but I've studied enough of great uh, that have really shown me the evidence that we are much more than we think we are. We're much more than skin and bone. So knowing that we are divine and knowing on the spiritual sector, whatever you believe in, that we are interwebbed with the spiritual world 
then we need to own that and really sometimes sit in that like, man, I am not just a human being sitting here in this room. I am this powerful force of God experiencing life through my eyes. What could I do with this? So the moment you start asking yourself, what could I do with this? You start changing some shifts. You start, your, your mind starts showing you some doors of things like, yeah, nothing actually impossible. And you start really believing that because you are asking yourself, Okay, am I getting, and, and trust me, there's highs and lows of life. You got your, you know, there, there, there's a, a season of everything. But when you, when you find out, like, you are powerful beyond the measure, you really start to ask yourself, like, what, what can I do? What can I, like, what, what is that? What is, like, what can I not do, right? So think about those things and just always remember, we are really divine creatures and we can create and we manifest the thoughts that we think in our minds. And now let's be intentional with the thoughts that we're thinking of, I don't want to get behind. I want to move the ball forward. I want to impact this community. I want to do these great things. And then suddenly your brain starts working to just start connecting with these people and this and this happens or get you working and start doing the research that you need to start that next project. Um, but we are powerful. We can't forget that. Oh my gosh, that was such a good, <laughs> I couldn't have asked for a better closing statement, but I'm going to ask. Um, I think this has been a wonderful chat with you and I knew you would bring so much value to our conversations and to our community. And I think that just the, the whole vibe that you give is so um, confident and reassuring. And I hope that people understand how, how or why they would want to work with you from listening to you talk in this episode. But I just wanted to give you a couple minutes to tell people who should be looking to work with you? Um, what might they work with you on? And how can they get a hold of you if they're interested after the episode? Yeah, thank you so much, Wendy. Um, so I work with small and medium-sized businesses that typically have been established already. Um, and I coach entrepreneurs every single week, right? So I, I do those two things. One, I'm working on ads and campaigns with my people. And then, um, and that's primarily small, medium-sized businesses, a lot of medical, a lot of... Um, a lot of different things, um, actually, but just small on the small and medium sized business base. And then the, on the coaching side, um, which is strictly coaches that are looking, I don't know how to do a website. You know, I, I can't, or I need guidance or I built a website. I need, I need to, you know, have a session of figuring out what's wrong with it. Right. So if you are in the space of your stock where nothing's working, none of your pipelines, none of the things that you have out there are delivering any traction. Um, then yeah, I would say, you know, book a quick call with me, um, it's small, medium sized businesses that are already out there doing something or already generating revenue, um, are ideal because they have the money to spend already to invest. Right. Um, so that's primarily the key. We have to, that's one thing with entrepreneurs. We have, I have this question all the time because it, it takes money to, to have a business, right? Um, so you have to be prepared to spend it, to hire people like you, hire people like me, like. You have to be, you have to have the money to spend it. And if you don't, um, you need, you need to shift some thinking and then shift some planning because, um, you know, that's the, that's the goal. So I would, I would just, and I know this is the last thing I started going on in a, on a rant there, but, um, but just if you're, if you're an organization that is frustrated, with what's going on right now, I'm, you know, I'm a great person to call to, to have a strategy call with for sure. Um, you can reach me on um, via email at Sandra at planyourcompany.com. Um, and uh, yeah, that would probably be the best, the best route to shoot me an email on, on our site, planyourcompany.com. And uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then of course we mentioned LinkedIn. Yeah. I know you're, I know you're over there too. <laughs> yes. Yes. And our LinkedIn page and then our United Latinas page. If you're a, if you're a, a woman of, you know, Latina or allies, we, some Latinas and allies. So on our, our United Latinas page, it's a great page also to be a part of community. If, if you're looking for a community like that, for sure. Yeah, I know that sounds like a wonderful community to join. I may be over on that page later. <laughs> so I'm excited to have you and thank you so much for just everything that you shared and just being a wonderful human and breaking all of this stuff down. I know marketing and PR and everything can be super complex for people to understand. So having experts explain over and over again from different perspectives is I think really valuable to our community. And it just brings um, a certain level of tangible things that they can do 
that, you know, are strategies that work. <laughs> so I appreciate what you shared today. Thank you so much for that. So thank you yeah. for being here, Sandra. It was good to see thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank no you. worries. Take Thanks care. everyone Bye-bye. for listening. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Social Impact Level Up podcast. It's been awesome to interview today's guests, and I hope that you leave inspired to take action. If you're looking for any of the information we spoke about, it's probably down in the show notes. Make sure that you're checking them out and you're clicking on any of the links that seem exciting to you. If you are looking for a coach or a consultant to help you with your social impact or your sustainability, reach out to me via my website, hop on my email list, or jump into one of my programs. All of the links are below. So excited to have you as part of the collective. Make sure that you come back and join us for another episode next week.